What's up fam? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and for those of you watching this at 2 o'clock in the morning, good dawn. This is your boy Cyphrix bringing you another tips and tricks video as always. Today we're going to be looking at Warblade, the newest addition to the Rangers of Oblivion arsenal. I've been playing with it since I want to say last Friday since its conception and I've had a blast. And I just want to show you guys what I think are some best practices to help you guys get started if you're considering, you know, switching it up, changing something different, variety is a slice of life. So let's get started. Don't pause. Press play. So to start off, for those of you unfamiliar with it, the Warblade is an Odachi-inspired longsword that hits hard and gets better over time. As you attack with it, you build up energy called Ki, and this can be found in the upper left corner of your screen. It changes from blue to gold and finally red, and I'll cover the mechanics of this in a bit, but just know that this is a very core system and should not be ignored. Now, the things that may attract someone to use the Warblade, pick it up, and main it possibly, First and foremost is the damage. It's fantastic damage, it's consistent. I wanna say it falls somewhere between Gravesword Spike and Dual Blade Spike. It's not as fast as a Dual Blade, and it doesn't hit as hard as a Gravesword, but if you were to switch those two together and make a Love Child, you would definitely for sure get a Warblade. Now the skills themselves have great synergy with each other and encourage strategy, keep your key flowing in and out, build, use, build and use, and that's gonna be a consistent thing throughout your fight. And then lastly, Warblades have a nice, sexy range to them. Oh my god, six feet in the air to the right, the left, doesn't matter. You're going to hit it, and you're going to hit it hard. This made breaking weak parts extremely easy, especially the harder reach ones. I mean, even more so than Lance, in my opinion. Uh, also, just a small bonus, and this is more a personal thing, but it has that sexy sweet delicious samurai bushido feel to it i'm a big fan of like roni kenshin ninja scroll afro samurai i mean if you guys are repping that lifestyle definitely pick this weapon up and play with it also just to make sure i add it in although you don't start with it later game you do get a counter so you do get a natural defense for the warblade which i think is cool now of course the warblade is not perfect and when i first picked it up there were a few things that bothered me starting with the speed the weapon feels rather slow and almost clunky when you first pick it up. The skill animations are long and take some extreme commitment, and sometimes I had to face tank damage just to get my own damage in. The range of the Warblade, while an asset, made it hard to focus on certain smaller weak points when they're nestled next to other parts of the behemoth body, because you're hitting everything now, and it took a lot of thought and a lot of planning to pinpoint those smaller parts. This plus maintaining your key gauge creates quite the skill cap for bringing out its real potential, and I'm sure there are some people out there that are naturals at Warblade. Again, this is just my opinion. Moving on, let's cover the key system, which has three levels. Blue Focus, Yellow Strike, and Red Break. Your normal attacks and first skill, Moon Cutter, build up your gauge located in the upper left corner of your screen next to your HP and stamina. Once filled, the second strike of Moon Cutter and a horizontal slash of Cloud Scatter, your second skill will push you to the next level where you start the build again. Cloud Scatter and your third skill, Blade Art, use up key to do the bulk of your damage. They are also affected by key directly. Cloud Scatter gets extra strikes as it uses more key, and Blade Art gets a finisher when your key is at strike level or above. Key level strike and break also grant passive bonus attack. Alright, so now we can finally talk about the skills. Firstly, your normal attack. It's slow and methodical, but it hits hard, and it's a series of diagonal and vertical cuts. The ending double uppercut's pretty nice, and it can be relied upon for softening up weak points and prep for your skills to do the action damage. Now your first skill, Moon Cutter, is an uppercut to a down strike. It does up to 300% damage and can give you about 35% of your key back. It also breaks through on the second hit. Your second skill, Cloud Scatter, attacks rapidly, each hit doing 108% damage. It consumes key and keeps attacking as long as you hold down the button. It performs two bonus hits for every 25% of the key gauge you use, and after eight consecutive hits, it performs a finisher strike that breaks through to the next key level. This is a bread and butter skill that can be relied on to reveal and break weak points. It also takes advantage of Warblade range, striking above ground targets really easily. Your third skill, Blade Art, is a forward lunge attack. As I mentioned before, you get a second finisher attack at key level strike and above, hitting for up to 1,370% damage. Upon use, it drops your key gauge by one level and recovers up to 40% of your key over 6 seconds. This is your spike damage skill and takes a little bit of aim. You can also rely on it to reveal and break weak points pretty easy. Now let's go over a few tips and tricks for evolving skill use. 
These are all based on my personal experience and I welcome input and additions. First, I want to show you a combo I use often to build. Outside of your normal attack, Blade Art and Moon Cutter are great for building keep. A shortcut I like to use is Blade Art into Moon Cutter under two conditions. I'm in either key focus or break mode, and I'm low on key. Blade Art region buff plus Moon Cutter will give you about 75% of your key in just a few short seconds. This is also a great setup to use Cloud Scatter to burn that gauge and get back to the next level. On that note, I advise against always using Moon Cutter to go to the next level of key. I feel like it kind of burns the entire gauge that you worked so hard to build up. Meanwhile, Cloud Scatter is a much better source of DPS. Now this has its place, so I recommend using Moon Cutter to go to the next level during a fast paced fight like Mantid and Howler, and using Cloud Scatter to go to the next level during a slower paced fight, think of Mamix or Kang. These guys have big windows of opportunity that you can squeeze Cloud Scatter into and put that key gauge to good use. This third idea is something I more just noticed, not created. Landing a full cloud scatter during a full key bar and key break refunds the bar completely. No clue why, it just does. This chains really nicely with blade art, which drops you down to a full key strike bar, and this primes you for another cloud scatter. My last tip is to not overcommit. As I mentioned before, warblade attacks like cloud scatter can have long animations and can get you hit. Fully committing can get you hit by unavoidable attacks and you take unnecessary damage and end up burning all your heals. You can help this by doing a cloud scatter right out of a dodge roll to try to maximize that window of opportunity and get that finishing hit in. It's tricky but doable and stylish. For armor, I preferred to use the Croker set for its weakness finder perk. I further boosted this with two wild souls that got me up to 15% weak point damage, which was extremely noticeable. Croker armor also comes with backstab, but early game 5% damage is not much. The detriment betrayer perk robs me of one use of a random wild soul upon entering the battlefield, but that's something that even one point of sincere could undo, and honestly I never noticed it. Now as for wild souls, I highly recommend attack wild souls with weak point and crit damage such as Terra and Dimat, time stop with Janus to take advantage of cloud scatter, and his time reverse which also resets your key gate and possibly paralysis trap souls such as Melena to lock down behemoths for your longer than average animations. Feel free to experiment and comment down below. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed my quick guide here. Again, these are just beginner tips and tricks, uh, skill descriptions, things of that nature for the Warblade. It's only been a week since this has come out, but I hope you guys have enjoyed and had fun. If you liked and learned anything, please continue supporting me and look forward to my next video. Take care. Hey guys, thanks again for choosing my channel to spend your time. If you liked and or learned anything, feel free to roll your face over that like button and subscribe for more. Also, I invite you to join me in my new Discord channel so all your awesome ideas can be buzzed directly to my brain via my pants pocket. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. See you again soon. Peace!